General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hail Silver. Hooray! Boxer, band fight, hard and fair. So in the ring, you give beware. He's dynamite because he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfasts every day with delicious Cheerios and milk. And get that good go power. Then folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Lone Ranger and Toto had many good friends in Modoc City. Among them was Marshal Jim Fraser. At 6.30 one evening, Marshal Jim entered the kitchen of the Henry House Hotel as Ma Hank was placing a large tray of snowy biscuits in the big oven of her huge cooking stove. Well, Marshal Jim. Howdy, Ma. What brings you here? Uh, it's official business, but Ma. Who's in trouble? I don't know one you need to worry about. Huh? Fact is, I'd like to see Tunnel. Well, he went out to the stable a few minutes ago, but he'll be back. Is the, uh... Lone Ranger here? Nope. Do you expect him? Well, now, according to what Tonto told me, the masked man will be here tomorrow or the next day. Say, hand me that lunchbox, will you, Marshal? Oh, sure. Okay, huh? Thanks. I've got to fix the lunch for Hank Nolan to take to work with him. Uh-huh. He'll be set to go on watchman duty at the bank in 15 minutes, and I don't even have his lunch started. Say, uh, what's on your mind, anyway? Well, I, uh... I got these handbills this morning in the mail. Huh. Is that the handbill you posted in the hotel lobby about counterfeit cash? Yeah. I got a letter from Washington this afternoon about the fellows who were circulating. The handbill I saw don't describe the critters. Neither does the letter I got. But the Treasury Department figures the crooks are headed this way on the way to the border. The only trouble is I don't have a description of them. Well, Tonto. Oh, Marshal Jim. Howdy. The Marshal's here to see you, Tonto. Why, uh, I'd like you to take a look at this handbill, Tonto. Here, read it, will you? Uh-huh. Ma! Hey, Ma, hey! Quiet down, Inky. What's the idea of hollering like that in the hotel? I just wanted to find out where you were. Howdy, Tonto. Marshal Jim told me you were here. Howdy, Inky. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. Is the Lone Ranger with you? No, he isn't. And what's more, the Marshal and Tonto are talking over official business, Inky. So you amos. Oh, all right. But I wanted to tell you I left a batch of help wanted notices on a desk in the lobby, Ma. All right, all right, Inky. Say, now that you're leaving, take this lunchbox to Hank Nolan's room, will you? 
He's due to set out for the bank any minute, so you'd better hurry. Oh, gosh. Every time I come around here, you put me to work. <laughs> you stop back in half an hour, and I'll pay you off with a plate full of chicken and dumplings. I'll be back. <laughs> what do you think of that handbill, Tonto? Handbill, not the scribe, counterfeit. Yeah, that's the trouble. Have you or the Lone Ranger run across any counterfeiters lately? You not hear of any for a long time. Uh, Hope you could give me a description of those crooks. The well, last time we hear of counterfeiters, three, four years ago, law capture whole gang. Well, in that case, I reckon I'll be on my way. Uh, here, a handbill, Marshal. Oh, thanks. Hey, had dinner yet, Marshal Jim? I had a sandwich half an hour ago, Ma. Mm-hmm. I got a ride to the next county to see Marshal Dixon. I got orders to pass some of these handbills on to him. Well, you've a long trip ahead of you if you're heading for Buckland County. I got my orders from Washington. The sooner Dixon knows about that worthless cash, the sooner he'll be on the watch for it. So long, Ma. So Have you long, Marshal. Late the next afternoon, a tall, well-dressed man entered the Henry house and registered as Cliff Paris. Had Marshal Jim Fraser known more about the well-groomed stranger, his search for one of the counterfeiters would have ended. For one of the bags Cliff carried contained $50,000 in counterfeit money. As he took the key to a room from the clerk, he picked up one of the ads the Lone Ranger's young friend Inky left on the desk. Then he went to his room. He was loosening his tie when he heard a sharp rap on the door. Yes, who is it? Started. Let me know. I just checked at the desk and found out you were here, Cliff. I got to town a half an hour ago. Yeah, I spent the last few days looking things over. Well, that's why I sent you here ahead of me. Sit down, Shirley. Right. You know, uh, this town must be booming. What do you mean? I picked up this ad at the desk. The Buffalo Construction Company wants carpenters, stonemasons, and mule skinners. Yeah, they're building a dam at Furnace River. <laughs> Big construction jobs mean big payrolls. It's easy to get rid of counterfeit cash in a boom town. Yeah. Take a look at this handbill. I tore it off the wall of the general store. Be on the lookout for counterfeit paper money. Treasury agents are ahead of us. The law will jump us as soon as we try to pass the worthless cash. Yes. We have only a few dollars of good money we can spend. <laughs> I haven't enough to pay my hotel bill. I never expected things to work out like this. Maybe we could borrow enough to get out of town from Hank Nolan. Nolan? Is he here? Yeah, I saw him yesterday, but he didn't recognize me. <laughs> you won't believe it, Cliff, but he's gone straight. Doing what? Working as night watchman in the Modoc City Bank. Are you sure of that? Yeah, he lives here in the hotel. But, um, what kind of a safe do they have in the bank? Now, the vault's an old one. None too solid looking, if you ask me. I reckon that's why they hire a guard during the day and a watchman at night. You used to be able to open the best safe made. <laughs> I could open the one in that bank blindfolded. <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. Shorty, we're going to leave town with $50,000 of good paper money. What? And leave the bank holding our bogus cash. Hey, have you gone local? No. We'll take the good money from the bank safe and leave the counterfeit bills in its place. Then we'll clear out. Where's uh, Hank Nolan's room? Down the hall. Lead the way. As Cliff and Shorty started down the hall to Hank Nolan's room, a tall stranger entered Ma Hank's kitchen. Standing at the large round table in the middle of the big room, with her arms buried to the elbows in bread dough, Ma frowned at the newcomer. As her eyes swept from the crown of his pomaded hair to the tips of his polished boots, she decided he was a traveling salesman. Mister, I don't know who you are, but I'm the owner of this hotel. And I don't like strangers busting into my kitchen. Now, if you want to rent a room, you... <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm intruding, Ma. Well, mister, you... If I am intruding, I... Oh, I'll... no, no, it... It's just that, well, doggone it, I never expected the Lone Ranger to walk in looking like a city-fied dude. Why, until you spoke, I didn't know who you were. (laughs) 
I'm glad the disguise is convincing. Tonto said you'd be in town today, but... Hey, what's the idea of the disguise? Ma, I'm looking for a couple of counterfeiters. Ah, so you're after them too. I, uh, received a letter from a padre a week ago, enclosing a note from a friend of mine named uh, Jack Dawson. He works for the Treasury Department. Oh. He asked me to meet him. Then that's where you've been. Yes. He told me he's learned the identity of the men we want, but he needs help to find them. So he asked you to give him a hand, huh? Yes. Uh, you expect to find them here? No, but Hank Nolan may be able to tell me where to look for them. Hank? That's right. Hey, come to think of it, he went to prison for counterfeiting. He worked with these crooks at one time. Uh, Marshal Jim doesn't know that. And he doesn't know what those counterfeiters look like. I'll talk to him after I've seen Hank. I've Hank's lunch packed for him. You take it with you, mister. Very well. Uh, he's in room 15. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Hunter Harry is a boy of fine. He brings wild animals back alive. He can capture lions, cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get go power too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... As the Lone Ranger made his way to Hank Nolan's room, Hank was ordering Cliff and Shorty, two unwelcome visitors, to leave. Get out of here, both of you! Uh, all we want you to do is let us into the bank. Oh, so that's it. You turned to bank robbing, eh? When I saw those handbills about counterfeit cash, I figured you two were up to your old tricks. You figured but... right. But we need some help from you to get rid of it. Why, Don't you reach for your gun, Hank. You're covered. Hey. Hank, if you call for help, you'll die seven. Hank, I'd like to talk to you. Who's that? I, I don't know. I tell whoever it is to go away. Hank, are you there? Yes. Shut up. Now he knows Hank's in here. Are you all right? He suspects something, Cliff. Step over to the wall next to the door, Hank. So we'll not be seen when the door opens. Shorty, open the door, but stay behind it. Then slug whoever steps into the room. Our savvy. Make it sound, Hank, and we'll kill you as well as a fellow at the door. Go ahead, Shorty. Hank, I'd like to talk to you about... Oh! Oh! Good work, Shorty. The cold. Quick, drag him out of the doorway and then close and lock the door. Right. You dirty skunks won't get away with that. Who is this fellow? I don't know. You're lying. I never saw him before in my life. Well, whoever he is... He didn't get a look at us. Time and gag him, Shorty, then go through his pockets. See if he's carrying identification. Minutes later, the disguised Lone Ranger was gagged and tied hand and foot. Then Shorty took a letter from the prisoner's pocket. He paled visibly at the sight of the letterhead. Hey, Cliff. Huh? Look at this. A letter from the Treasury Department. I'll bet my last dollar we've captured a treasury agent. If you have, you're in real trouble. You and this stranger are the ones who are in trouble, Hank. Well, what do we do with them now? We leave them here, hog tied and gagged for the time being, and take care of them later. <laughs> Later that evening, Inky entered the Henry House kitchen. 
We found Tonto with Ma Hank. Ah, Tonto. Has the masked man come to town yet? Ma Hank, say him here, ain't you? Where is he? He's talking to Hank Nolan right now. Huh? But he ought to be back here any minute. I've got a pot of fresh coffee ready for him and a fine supper. He's not talking to Hank Nolan, Ma. Sure he is. I just met Hank in the lobby on his way to the bank. Hmm? Two fellas were with him, and neither one of them looked like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I didn't know the Lone Ranger either when he came into the kitchen, Inky. He's wearing a derby hat, a check vest. The gents with Hank weren't wearing derby hats, and neither one of them had on a check vest. Did Hank say he'd seen the Lone Ranger? All he told me was to be sure to give you this I.O.U. for his lunch. What? I.O.U.? He said he wanted to keep his account straight. Here. He must be loco. Why? Why, he never gives me any I.O.U.s. I bill him for room and board at the end of each week. Including the price of the lunches I pack for him. What on back of paper? Carrot wanted. And he circled it in ink. Hank tore that one off of the help wanted ads I left in the lobby. Well, now, why'd he do it? It just don't make sense. Uh, Inky, are you sure he gave this to you? Of course I'm sure. The two men with him didn't seem to like it so well that he took time to write that out. But Hank seemed mighty anxious to get it done. Hank, still work at Banks? Yep, Dono. The Lone Ranger and Marshal Jim helped him get the job. He's probably there now at 7 o'clock. Huh? I wonder who his friends are. I don't know. The tall, skinny feller with the scar on his forehead stayed mighty close to him while he wrote that note. But you know, come to think of it, Ma, mm-hmm. Hank wasn't carrying his lunch. Inky, your loco. Hank takes his lunch with him every night. He didn't have it, Ma. And why him write note? That beats me, Tonto. Hank's never given me an I.O.U. for his lunch. He didn't have his lunch when I saw him. But the Lone Ranger took it to him. Maybe he didn't see the Lone Ranger. But the Lone Ranger left here to go to Hank's room. Inky, you go to Hank's room. See if Lone Ranger there. Me go to bank. Ask Hank if him see him. All right, Tonto. Tonto found the back door of the bank unlocked. Inside, he found a lantern on the floor near the safe, and by its light discovered that the place was deserted. Tonto, you in here? Uh Uh-huh. You find Lone Ranger? The door to Hank's room was locked, but I heard noise inside, like someone was in there. Whoever it is sounded like he's gagged. Where's Hank? Him not here. Inky, you get Marshal Jim pronto. Me go to hotel. Try get in Hank's room. You want me to tell the marshal to meet you there? Not right. At that moment, Cliff and Shorty held guns on Hank as they entered the Henry house through a side door. Well, look, Shorty. No one's seen us here. Now, up the back steps to your room, Hank. Go on, move. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Hank's locked room, the Lone Ranger had regained consciousness. He had managed to knock a drinking glass from a bedside table, and with a jagged piece of the broken glass, was trying to cut the rope binding his wrists. But the task was difficult. His hands were tied behind his back. Finally, the rope weakened, then broke as he strained against it. He removed the gag, then gripped the broken glass and cut the rope around his ankles. Before he was finished, he heard a key in the lock. The rope around his ankles was not yet cut through, but it had begun to give. As the door swung open, the strand severed. Hank stepped into the room first. The Lone Ranger was on his feet. He picked up the gun Shorty had taken from him. Move out of the doorway, Hank. Get into the room. No, I, I... Oh, oh, oh. Holding his gun, Shorty pushed Hank into the room. Hank stumbled and fell. <laughs> then Shorty and Cliff stepped through the doorway. Carrying the black bag, now filled with good currency... Cliff was about to turn to close the door when... Hey, Cliff, look! Shorty turned his gun from Hank to the disguised Lone Ranger who stood against the wall. I'll kill you! Before the crook could fire... No! A bullet no! from the Lone Ranger's gun struck his shoulder. Shorty fell under its impact as Cliff turned, hoping to get away. Cliff, you dirty crook, you're not going to escape! <laughs> Hank leaped to his feet. He threw himself at Cliff, bringing the thin counterfeiter down. Stand clear, Hank. I'm getting covered. Hank obeyed, but cried out in alarm as he saw Shorty snatch a knife from his belt with his good arm. Look out! As the long blade cleared its sheath, the disguised Lone Ranger fired again. No! The knife shattered, but the diversion had given Cliff time enough to draw a gun. Hank threw himself against Cliff a moment before the counterfeiter fired. The shot missed the Lone Ranger. An instant later, a bullet from the disguised Manhunter's gun smashed Cliff's derringer. That does it. They're both disarmed. 
I I don't know who you are, stranger, but you saved my life. And your own, too. I, I'm a friend, Hank. But I'll identify myself later. These two rats are counterfeiters. Yes, I know. I wanted to talk to you about them. Well, they forced me to let them into the bank. That black bag of clips holds $50,000 of good American paper money they stole. They left the same amount of bogus cash in the safe, hoping that I'd be blamed for switching the money. Now, you're both covered, so don't try a fast move. I'm hurt. Your wound will be taken care of. Hey, what's the idea of gunplay in my hotel? What's going on? What's happened? Aye, uh, Kimosabe. Kimosabe. Mister, what happened? So this is where you are, Hank. Tano went to the bank looking for you. He found the place empty and the doors open. Yeah, these two skunks are the reason for that, Marshal Jim. The tall, skinny ones, Cliff Paris. One of the slickest counterfeiters alive. His partner, Shorty Murdoch. I... I was in prison with him. What's that? I think this gent's a treasury agent. He came here to talk to me about them, and they slugged him. Is that true, mister? Are you a treasury man? No, Marshal Jim. (laughs) Well, don't you recognize his voice, Marshal? Well, I... Hey, you! (laughs) Well, doggone it. Mister, I want to talk to you after I put these skunks behind bars. It was after midnight when Marshal Jim Fraser entered Ma Hank's kitchen, followed by Hank Nolan. Inky was already there, eating a piece of apple pie. Well, Marshal Jim... Those counterfeiters are in jail, Ma. Uh, The banker and I found the bogus money they put into the safe, and we locked the good money they stole back in the vault. My chief deputy's there now taking Hank's place for the rest of the night. For each sake's alive, you didn't lose your job, did you, Hank? No, Ma. I've been given the night off. Uh, Tano and his friend left town as soon as things were under control. You mean they're gone? That's right, Ma. Oh, dead reddit. I didn't even have time for a good visit with the masked man. What masked man, Ma? I didn't see anyone wearing a mask. You saw the gent who came to your room, didn't you? Say, I don't know who he was, but he sure is a fighting man. <laughs> fighting man is right, Hank. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Showdown. Cause champions are made, not sport. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's good to know that champions are made, not born. Gives us all a chance. For instance, let's go back to 1943 and listen to the story of champion Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees. Mickey worked hard to learn the game. As he got on his way to fame, he practiced batting, learned to throw. And Mickey knew what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. No wonder Mickey's got all that steam. Mantle and Wheaties, they're still a team. Why, Mickey Mantle grew up on Wheaties, been eating them since he was 12. So good for a guy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Come on, Mickey, built that ball. On his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not sport. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. When the Lone Ranger reached the end of a murderer's trail, he found himself facing the combined fighting power of an outlaw gang and a pack of savage Indians. Could he win against such odds? Well, be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Betty Joyce. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>